Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, Simon and I will be sharing some of our thoughts on the Imperial Guard, especially the armor post Munitorum Field Manual after the recent update, which made a lot of the guard tanks cheaper and a lot of the artillery more expensive. Now, this is going to be our first impressions after using a lot of those units in a battle report. And if you've not seen that battle report, then please check out the link down in the description and check out the link that's going to be at the end of this video. There, of course, will be spoilers in this episode about that battle rep. So if you don't want to know what happens in the end, then make sure you watch that other video first. Simon, you're being overtaken by Nurgle's Rot. What's going on? Just chugging down water like his life depends on it. There we go, that's better. <laughs> so with our ever-professional air caught on camera, live in Technicolor, <laughs> Simon, give us your thoughts on the Lehman Russ Vanquisher. I think there's play in that. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, it might just be like, you know, I had a bad turn against it, but it did tank. Three dreadnoughts and ten hell blasters with smoke. Well, even so, but yeah, right. Smoke, you can do it every turn. Yeah. So for those of you uh, that uh, that saw the battle report, in was it turn two or turn one? Turn one. Turn one my vanquisher uh, got targeted by Simon's uh, Redemptor and Ballistus and regular boxy dreadnought and unit of hell blasters, and I popped smoke. At even and it had oath on it, and it survived. It didn't it actually take. Didn't have oath. I didn't have oath turn one. Yeah. That was it. You put oath over on a different unit. So without oath, it only took two wounds. <laughs> um, and I had a four invul on it as well from the tech priest. So it was very... So that is, that is a 145-point unit that probably tanked about 600, 700 points worth of shooting. Yeah, and the rest. And the rest. So very, very durable. And it kind of comes over to um, what we've, you know, what I've said a little bit on the streams, which is 145 points to that defensive profile. That's pretty good. Well, compare it to... <laughs> How much is this guy? 135. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, um, the, the damage output wasn't that great, though. You were on the receiving end of it. How did it feel like... I don't... <sighs> Do you ever feel, like, intimidated by the Vanquisher? Yeah, because it's just, at some point, it's just going to obliterate a unit. Yeah. What? It just needs one shot to get through. One out of five. You know... Statistically, you're maybe going to get two shots through. But what you're going to find is that it's going to park, you know, it, I, from my point of view, playing against it was, well, you can hammer away with the big gun against my dreadnoughts and hammer away at Space Marines with the other guns. Yeah. You know, so that's a last cannon and a, you know, a last cannon and a Vanquisher cannon. And a Hunter Killer. And a Hunter Killer into the big stuff and then two plasma cannons with blast into another unit. Yeah, and a heavy stubber just doing its thing. So for 145 points, um, like, it's not, you know, S tier godlike, but you know you could run 290 points of those running round, and so it can hit. So you can, when properly supported, get hitting on twos, rolling ones. Yeah, don't we start on that? Um, <laughs> but that does require an order, and for it to stay still, and for it to have a sentinel daring recon there, yeah. um, near it or near the target you're shooting yeah. at. Uh, it does get four rolls to wound against vehicles and monsters. Yeah. But that never came up because we often found that it just wounded. Yes. Just wounded on twos. Or... Wounding on twos and threes. Yeah. It did miss a couple of times. Yeah. I, I, no, it, it's not going to be an ultra competitive choice. But actually, I think it's it's an interesting unit. Would that. you put three in a list for the grand total of? 435 points. That's a lot of tough wounds for 445 points. 35. Well, yeah. I'm taking those 10 points, Ivan. <laughs> That's a lot of wounds that... Yeah. It is a lot of wounds for someone to chew through. Yeah. 39 T11 two-up save uh, wounds. Yeah. With the ability to pop smoke on yeah. one of them a turn. It's pretty tasty. It's very... Now, the other unit that's kind of interesting, which you, you haven't played against yet, is the Eradicator. Now, it has the same defensive profile, and it's only five points more, and its main gun is strength, is that its main gun is six shots plus D3. So on average, eight shots a turn, and if you roll badly, you still get seven shots from it. And it uh, it's strength seven, AP minus one, ignoring cover two damage. So it's very much an anti-infantry weapon, 
But thinking about that last game that we played, you know, what, what was what was more intimidating to you? Basically an ignore cover, a, a to ignore cover auto cannon shots or the big vanquisher. <laughs> it's kind of, they're both the same points. One's five points more. Yeah. Well, then you could make some match, don't you, to... Yeah. I think that there is, I think triple vanquisher has play. I mean, I, I guess you're running it at, it's costing you 10 points per wound at... Save two toughness. Yeah. You know, yeah, damn it. You know, and actually that's do you look at it that way and go for four you know, four hundred and thirty five points I'm gonna get thirty nine wounds at that and I yeah. you know, are, are you can you put something tough at that kind of point per per wound in there? So the thing so comparing it to I was going to say, it's like, what would you rather have, a Vanquisher or a Tactical Squad? You're always going to pick, but they do different jobs, so right, it's hard well, to compare. So what would you rather do, have three Vanquish... If, if, if I lined up my Terminator brick... What would you rather have against it, three Vanquishers? Or three Terminators. Or one Terminator brick? Uh, yeah, sorry, three Terminators or one Terminator brick with a captain. Yeah. <clears throat> Tricky, because obviously you have a lot of potential... Well, I don't know, but I've got a lot of plasma. Mm. I can hurt you, you can't hurt me. Well, mm. Unless you give, you give you good fisting. Your strength eight. Yeah. Your strength eight with the fists. Yeah. Fishing for fives. Yeah. Four save on my end. Two damage. It's gonna take a lot. Yeah. It's gonna I take. Mean, they're, they're, they're different units to do different jobs yeah. and all the rest. Of it. But actually, if you, you know, if you sit there going, if I, if I plonk ten terminates down the middle of the board and go, you know, a lot of people are looking and go, how am I going to chew through that? Yeah. Well, damn slight easier than you're going to chew through three vanquishes. Yeah, three battle tanks is hard. It is. Hard. It's hard. What would you um one thing to one thing I was gonna say is uh this this Vanquisher is now fifteen points cheaper than a Space Marine Gladiator Lancer. Now the Lancer on paper hits on threes, this hits on fours, but bear in mind that the Lehman Russ is always gonna have take aim. Yeah. So they're both hitting on threes realistically. Um so you both hit on threes. The Gladiator Lancer has only got 12 wounds at T10 and uh, a three-up save. Yeah. So it's more expensive. It does get two shots, whereas the Vanquisher only gets one, but then the Vanquisher gets the Laz Cannon. Yeah. So I feel, I feel like they are basically the Gladiator Lancers. Yeah. Now, I think, and when... Uh, That's a good point about what we're looking at, actually. And so if... With a smaller footprint. Yeah, they're bigger. Like, they're quite chunky. Yeah, yeah chunky. Yeah. So, what, so yeah, if, and Space Marine players, they love their Lancers. Yeah. So the guard can the guard do this this iron storm better than the mm, marines? You don't get the open moment though, do you? That's the other thing. No, and iron storm get a lot more re rolls because they. It would be interesting to put it up, put run some of those against some more traditional guard armor list and just see who out shoots who. Um, oh, the vanquishers would have a field day then because the guard if you got a like battle cannon shooting at them, it's really winning on fives. Um, well, I think we're missing the big point about the... What's the big point? The big point about the guard point is Hellhound Meta. Hellhound Meta in Gavin. 115 points. I know. I'll tell you. One of these days I'm going to get them to work. How many do you have? Three. Get them out next list. I'll bring something else. 445 points. 300. What? Three. Mm. I was going to say, if it's 445, I'll take the Vanquishers over. <laughs> three, three, 345 points for three Hellhounds. Not bad, is it? Is there, is there, so why pick, why not both? For 780 points, if my maths is correct, not even that much, 770 points. Check me, I feel like I'm wrong there. Yeah, no, 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 so three. No, 780. 780, Four, definitely. Five, times three. Four, eight, five. Do the maths. Do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Do it live. 780. 780 points. Fair. You get three Vanquishers and three Hellhounds. I mean, it's going to be fun. <laughs> That's a lot of armor. Hellhounds are a two-up save. Yeah. Hellhounds are 11 wounds. Hellhounds are a T10. Yeah. Against the majority of anti-tank options, that's fine because you are uh, you get wounded by auto cannons on fives. You get wounded by last cannons on threes in both cases. I, I, you know what? I, I generally think the play in them is if you pop them in a, a proper mechanized list. Triple Vank. Yeah, be, because I think, you know, you... <laughs> Because actually, by doing three of those, plus your six crown errors, plus three hellhounds. Three hellhounds, three vanks, two tank commanders. Why, yeah. don't, why, why not? Get orders on all those vanquishers. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're at five. You're at 
eight tanks and you've probably so do the points i give it let me let me throw some points at you so 780. Look, 780 plus one two five times six at one one two five times six yeah what, what points are we on 1530 plus yeah 435 1965 boom baby boom that is five that is eight tanks Six chimeras. That is 14 armored vehicles. Indirect fire. Fuck it, you haven't got it. All right, fine. But you know what? You, you know what? You you put double hellhound. You put double heavy flame on all of those chimeras. Yeah. And you have catachans in the back with double flamer as well. Yeah. And you are looking at essentially nine hellhounds <laughs> and five Lehman Russes. Oh, if someone comes at you, you just stay in combat and burn them. It's just burn them. Someone comes at you, you just you just heavy flaming them. Oh. That's that's the new meta. That's cheap guard armor. That's the new meta. Horde, horde armor. Horde tank. There you go. Because the best bit is, you still got sixty infantry in that list. Yeah, you still got thirty-five points. Took a cyclops in for uh, getting behind the lines, and uh, yeah. you could actually make that cheap. By the way, yeah. just to throw this out there. Scions are now only 50 points each. Yeah. They can go in chimeras. Yeah. So you could have your chimeras. You could save uh, six, th you could save 30 points. Yeah. So you'd have 65 points left over. Yeah. Something to think about. And then you would also... Uh, oh, no, you'd be a Scion think... Command Squad. They were know, basically, you could do it. There's no other way of getting eight assault tanks. Nine. Yeah. Triple Hellhound and six chimeras. Nine assault tanks. Yeah, but I'm just going, if you get a normal Steel Legion list, there's right. six kind of errors, yep. getting an extra eight things that are going to do damage on top of those six. Never done that before. No, you normally go six and six. So normally you have four Russes, two artillery, and six kind of errors. But then you've got an extra two there. But now we've got an extra two. I see. I think that's uh, an interesting... The, the indirect fire thing could fuck you a little bit, but just go and balls to the wall with your hellhounds and just, just charging that's around right. things. Yeah, but... Not every army has indirect. No, a lot of armies have to deal without it. So it's not like... But guard don't have combat. That are, So most armies don't have indirect fire. Yeah. What they do is they're very, very fast or they charge through walls. Yeah, but most people don't have 200 wounds of T10, two up <laughs> God, how much armor? How many wounds would it be? 66 on the Chimeras. 66 on the Chimeras. Plus... Another 33. On the, the Hellhounds. Hounds, plus... Um, 13 times 5? That uh, is going to be uh, 65. How much is that? Like 108, almost 200 wounds? 164 wounds. 164 wounds. All of which. All need last cannons yeah. to deal with. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking hell. We're on to something. We're on to something at Simon. We're cooking. We're cooking now. I want, when you do this video, I want, I want a little... You're in the video. This is it. This is the when video. You, when you do your top tip tactic about some daily crafting, you know. I will credit the admiral. I finally come up with something. See, you, you, well, you are the admiral, and that is a fleet of vehicles. <laughs> That's a vehicle fleet. Now, if you, if you pop that down, all right. Even if someone's got a lot of anti tank, yeah, what are they going to shoot? You completely overwhelm them. Yeah. There's too many targets. They can't. They kill two tanks. The next four get them. Yeah, and even if you're running into a hordy list, then you've got three hellhounds running around burning the shit out of stuff. Mm. Yeah, I think the hellhounds get hunter killers, you know. That's an interesting... Uh, that's 1,400 hunter killer missiles. That's an interesting list for you to take to tournament at some point. So I burnt the shit out of the meta at a tournament. <laughs> now, the funny thing is, I hope you to alarm you, I can run that list tomorrow. I got the infantry. I've got four hellhounds. Obviously, I can't take all four, but I got three hellhounds. I got chimeras with all the heavy flamers. Yeah. I can run that list tomorrow. I think you should. It's spicy. I think it's been interesting. I mean, it could be absolute dog turd, to be fair, but I think it would be. And it, there's not going to be many people when you pop that out. It's going to have the same effect that when I rock up and you've got your army out ready to display, and I look at it and they go, oh, Jesus, right, there's 240 infantry on there. How am I going to deal with that? How am I going to deal with that? And. If you put that into someone who never seen that before, they're going to look at that and go, oh, bollocks. Yes. Oh, fiddlesticks. Yeah. Mm. It's... All right. There'll be some list that can... Now, what about this for an idea? Because you like your hellhounds. Yes. What about hydras? They are now 85 points. They're a chimera 
which fires four twin-linked autocannon shots with anti-fly 2+, and gets four rerolls to hit and wound against flying units. Strength and damage minus one, three damage. 85 points. It's another way of... I don't know if it's better. Or would you rather take that or, or a Hellhound? I think Hellhound, because you can put your Hellhounds up front. And you can you don't need orders H for Hellhound them. Hellhound is one of those units that people are unnaturally scared of. Yes, that is a very, very good point. The psychology behind the Hellhound. I think the number of people that I've I put a Hellhound down, they're like, oh, it's that Hellhound's going down the flank! And I'm just looking at them like, why are you shitting yourself? <laughs> yeah. But 115 points. If you put, I mean, that, that, that one needed the point decreases. I looked at that and I thought, 345 points, three Hellhounds, one flank. That is going to upset mm. people. Mm. Not that I play the game to upset people, but they're going to look at that again. <laughs> it's always a bonus, though. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's you. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, you wound me, sir. You wound me. But I, that, that was the one that I looked and thought, I reckon there's, uh, you know, or again, uh, it, it depends on what, what, what fish tank you're swimming in, to be fair. But, uh, it, you know, the top tier players aren't going to get. It's know, a lot of armor. Yeah. It's there's, however you however you break that down, it's an overwhelming amount of armor. Yeah. You will have armor superiority. Yeah. You will have firepower superiority. The main thing to look at is not what it's strong at, what is it weak at. Yeah. And the weakness of that army is it doesn't have indirect fire, so yeah. combat armies could be all over you like a bad rash. But if you are running eight vehicles with enough flamers to give the sun an inferiority complex, <laughs> then... Is combat really that threatening to you? Probably not. Overwatch every turn is pff, pff, just why not? Just fucking chuck a CP I into it. Kill one unit a turn. Yeah. Well, not, not obviously kill more than one unit a turn, but it depends on how many. But how many? How how many units are you going to have that can kill a vehicle in tank in a tank in one turn combat? And you know that you're actually pretty fast because you're ten inches. And if your vanquishers can't see anything, you put your fucking move 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 onto your hellhounds. You start going thirteen inches and burning things. Yeah. Hmm. Now. Now another question for you. I know we I know we could sit here wank off the hellhound all night, but let's move over to the negative side of the day slate. Yeah. The artillery changes. Now, as a man who has run many a manticore in his time, yeah. and has been the receiving end on the many a manticore time, yeah. do you think 190 points are justified? No, they did sod all that game, and they should have been happy hunting ground for the manticore. All all your infantry yeah. were five man or larger squads, yeah. and it. I genuinely can't remember what it killed. Yeah. Nothing notable. The I've, friggin' Makari's Vanquisher, I remember what that thing killed. I, I've never been as much a fan of it as the artillery as you, though, to be fair. I think the problem with the artillery was it was getting spammed. So people uh, basically were taking like three man, two manticores, three basilisks. But, and that was when that, was, that, that list went up quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's different. Well, what about about 60, 70 points? It's amazing how much load off makes a difference, to be fair. <laughs> it's mm. like, you know, if I've got five man strikes, I can play my Grey Knights and you can block them, then yeah, it's nasty if I've got fat keys down there. You can't. So yeah. It's very easy to gimp. That's true. And, I, and I've always said that every guard army should have some indirect fire in it. And I do think that you hugely benefit from it. But in that game that we just played, I didn't have. I basically went, played a game without indirect fire, yeah. and um, I, I, I still managed to make things happen, which is, I, I suppose, somewhat pay, significant. What, what's the battle at the moment? One fifty. It went up again. One fifty for Basilisk is very on the edge of being worth it. Very. Mm. What would you rather have? A Basilisk. Or a Vanquisher and five points in your back pocket. Yeah. That's that's the question. What would you rather have? And they both basically do the same thing. They're both damage output. One does it indirectly, one does it directly. Uh, the, What's the uh, Warden's battery now? 120. 120, it stayed the same. The two. They're swingy, 2d6, but they do get blasts on each gun. So in your army, that would have been 2d6 plus two. See, there's some play there. You were going to embrace the FOB lifestyle. Uh, it's 30 points cheaper than... So what, you got 2d6. All right, you're not getting the, the, the special rule, are you? So what you get with the field arms battery is if it receives an order, yeah. it gets sustained hits. So you'd have sustained and lethal hits on it. 
Now it only hits on a five natively, but it stays still, it hits on a four. We take aim, it hits on a three, but then obviously you've got minus one to hit for firing in direct. So if it was two, two manticores or three or six guns, I'd take six guns for 30 points less or 20 points less without a doubt. Two manticores is 380 points. Yeah. Three or three years. Or six guns. Four. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty, when you put it like that, it's, the Manticore's pretty bloody swingy. Yeah. 6d6 plus blast. Strength 7 minus 1, 2 damage. All right, you're not going to. What's the minimum shots on a, on, a, on a Manticore? Two. What's the minimum shots on two Field Oz batteries? Two. Yeah. What's the maximum shots on a Manticore? Seven. What's the maximum on a Field Oz battery? Twelve. What's the average on FOBs? Seven. Average on Manticore, four to five, 4.5. But the Manticore does three damage. I think the problem with the Field Orbs battery is there are hidden costs. You've got to read the fine print. So firstly, you need someone to order them. Yeah. And secondly, they probably need a Sentinel to be worth it. It's on fives, don't we? Yeah, they don't hit on fours with take aim. But they are heavy. Yeah, so heavy plus take aim, but minus one for indirect. Yeah, means you hit on fours. Mm. But with the sensor, you get them hit on threes with rolling ones. With sustained hits with lethals. I think you can build fobs up, but I don't think... I think if you want your fobs to do well, and not just be a bit of supplementary firepower, they're not going to be that much cheaper than manticles. Yeah, true, true. But you might get more out of them. I think lower... I think they're, they're a bit... This is the thing. You are reacting. So I'm taking you sort of through this... Like the same way I was sort of working my way through it. And I, I am very tempted by fobs now, but I, I'm not suddenly there going, oh, yeah. fobs, inject no, them into no, my no. veins. I'm thinking, I, are they even, are they viable? That's as good I, as it I, gets. Yeah, but I've never been as enamored with artillery as you. <sighs> you gotta love the artillery, man. No, I, I never, um, I quite like the mortar pits idea back in ninth. They were quite an interesting. Yeah, yeah, triple mortar. I, no. 190 points now. 10% of your army sat there? No. Shit, man, yeah, it's 10% of your army, for they one thing. No, no. They're, they're, they're staying in the box. Yeah. They're, they're just not. Um, you know, cause I, uh, I mean, I, I always look at it, and it's probably me as a player, that what do you want the artillery to do? You want to put pressure on the person's home objective. That's basically it. That's it. That's the number one job. Yeah. And also what goes, oh, that's very interesting. Loan up. Here's my loan up. Can't do anything about it. Yeah. So So you don't sometimes you don't want to overinvest in artillery because sometimes you if you go really into it then it becomes like the same thing as your tanks because the, you're a main damage dealer. But the, the other but the other thing to think of with um because I'm more more concerned when I play you is that I mean I this game take for example how much did I have screening out my back line? Huge amount. It's the infantry. Yeah. The infantry and the tanks are what we need the games. So the artillery Helps a bit. So, yeah, all right, I can spend two or three turns trying to blast you off the thing, or alternatively, I can wait for you to kill the unit and then just come back in and shoot you off anyway. Yeah. Or force you to screen more back there than you want. So, that, that's that's why I've never sort of found it Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think I'm going to, I am going to try out some field launch batteries, but I'm, I'm going in there with uh, limited expectations. I think, I think they'll be good, but I don't think they've suddenly got better. I think everything else has got worse, and they, and they've not got any better. They're just they're just suddenly slightly more appealing because of their relative points cost. Yeah, I think they're a, a potentially a more um, economical way of fulfilling that role. Yeah, I, I really do. Yeah, uh, at that. Because Which is probably you know, what they wanted us. It's probably what G, uh, GW wanted. They probably wanted us to uh, to tone because artillery was becoming a bit of a problem at the top top tier. Uh, two super majors had been won by someone spamming artillery, the same person. So I think basically what GW has done is they have nerfed it a bit, where everyone else can jiggle a few points around and still fit in the artillery they prefer. And then the other people who were spamming it need to think: Do I now pivot to fobs? Or you have like a lot of the forward options, but I'm very hesitant to suggest forward options when they're probably all going to get legends. Yeah, true. Which is a bit of a pisser. I guess it'll be interesting whenever the codex comes out what they do with the artillery detachment. Mm. But I'm, I'm not a, you know, I'd rather have hellhounds. Hellhounds, <laughs> and that that's a closing statement. Artillery, meh. Hellhounds, good. 
well, they are in my world. There you um, are. We'll have to get your Hellhound meta going next uh, next game, I, maybe. I think it's a really... But I, I think that, you know, what we've just come up with there is eight <laughs> tanks that are going to hurt people and six tanks that can still hurt people. I think I need... To, yeah, I need to take that to the next tournament. It's got to be done. Yeah. And just see who... Um, who... Because, be, you know, that's that... You know, three vanquishers and two... Tank commanders, so give the tank commanders like something really punch like demolishers. Yeah, give yeah. them something real chunky. You know, what what is the job of those five tanks? Those five tanks' job is to kill what's going to kill your tanks. That's it. Yeah, Doesn't and matter. the enemy won't have indirect fire, yeah. so that we don't need to worry about indirect fire because we're just going to kill their things when they poke their, their heads out. <laughs> Unless playing garden, they've got six. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you've got that one guy guy who's just lent into like six fobs, three reducers, and three urging platforms. You're like, oh god! But you know, if you face that guy, you just rush him down with your three hellhounds. Yeah. The, the the question is right. If you've got two demolishers on your tank commanders and three vanquishers, and five plasma cannons, five lads cannons, yeah. five hunter cannons, and, and you're against someone who can actually damage your list on a regular basis, or have you got enough to deal with that threat? Yeah. And yeah. I would yeah. suggest in the ninety percent of champ. The vast majority of games you've played, no. Yeah, they haven't got. They, they, haven't, they haven't got. They that, haven't. Yeah. And when you have got it, the chances are nine times out of ten you're going to be able to outshoot it anyway. Yeah. Um, and then it just actually how well do you play the mission? I mean, that's that's the only other issue. But uh, that, I think that's an interesting concept, um, but especially that because you're not going. to... I mean, how much is a how much is a battle? A standard battle. One seventy. See, you know, that's, even that's worth it. Yeah, but you, you can't. You're seventy five points down. It's mm. you pay seventy five points for an extra few D plus one uh, David, uh, one AP shots, and uh, you'd rather take the big dick shot than the many little dick shots. Not generally, but I think in this concept, yeah, because it's because just... you're gonna have so many big dick shots. Yeah, they all add up. You yeah. get the best of both worlds. You got a lot of di yeah. I mean, that's gonna be. Three vanquishers, six plasma cannons, two demolishers, and ten plasma cannons every go. That's a lot of plasma. It's a lot of everything. And on that note, <laughs> on that, on that rather if you're watching, worries, it worries and statement. If, if you if you're watching this and you play Tim at the next tournament with that list, I do deeply apologise. <laughs> yeah, you heard it for hashtag. Blame Simon. <laughs> As always, hashtag Blame Simon. Well, Simon, thank you so much for um, for staying and doing the uh, the after action report. Man, I know we've just filmed a big battle report, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed our sort of musings on the meta. Hope you guys, uh, you know, let, let us know what you think. Let us know if you agree with Simon's uh, hellhound fetish, or if uh, if you think that maybe you're going to go down that hydra route. Are vanquishers a big thing or not? Put it down in that comment section. If you enjoyed today's video, as always, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more during glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the War Masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. 
to a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Marcus Roberts, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Wolf, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously, guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.